Welcome to another installment of Online Games. Today, we're going to be talking about scaling databases. Uh, my name is Mark Mandel. I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. This is going to be very light touch on this topic. This is huge and deep, but I just want to talk about a couple of things about how uh, you want to look at potentially scaling your databases uh, when talking about games. Um, so to give a bit of an example here and why this is just so important, if we look at say a particular example, and I'm not going to go into a particular type of database. We're going to talk conceptually here just to give you some, some thoughts and feelings on, on how to do this. But let's say, let's say we have a bunch of players like we would do normally. So here we have a computer and another computer and another computer, right? And these are all our players that are playing our games. Um, and even, even in a realm where say, for example, this is just, we just need people to be able to log in. Uh, these need to be able to talk to some kind of backend service, say these are all little servers, probably maybe some type of web server doing some sort of like login operation, say something like that. And we can run lots of these, right? We can run a bunch of these and these can all send requests to any number of these servers. And we can, we can always add more too, which is kind of nice, right? You know, this is just taking this little login request. Yeah. And if we had, we need more like, okay, cool. Now, now let's send it to extra ones. And these, are, these aren't too bad to scale. We can scale these quite easily, but we need to have a central place where we can store data and have it be the authority of the things that are happening inside our game. So commonly, yep, you guessed it. This is where we would commonly have what we have our, our database. But what we see here, for example, is say we're doing a login operation. We have to just do like password and username uh, connections and just check whether they're valid and whether they, uh, they all work. All the servers that we ever need to connect to, right? All the servers that that may be able to scale up all of these login requests as they go up uh, and we can scale these here. What can be a lot harder is scaling this here. As you can see, this is, this is what we refer to as a bottleneck. Everything is coming through this individual point here and there's only so much we can do about it. Uh, there are always gonna be bottlenecks inside your systems. That's just part of building distributed systems or backend systems for anything, regardless of whether it's games or not. But there are some particularly hard problems here when saying, okay, everything has to go into this one machine here that is our database. Uh, and how do we make it so that we can send a huge number of writes and a huge number of reads of data into and out of it and do it so that it doesn't fall over during uh, game time. So one of the things that also makes things particularly tricky with uh, gaming is our load graph looks a little different. So what do I mean by that? So if we draw a pretty graph, so here we have a, an X and Y axis, and this is say our number of players or our load, uh, this is time, right? Ideally in like a magical world, it would be lovely if it slowly did this nice sort of thing, right? So we had plenty of time to adjust our, our, our system so that like as players increase, right? Over time, it sort of does this nice easy curve. Unfortunately games, I don't know if you've noticed, don't work like that. So usually what happens is, is we launch our game and everyone wants to play. So we go straight up. Then usually we get a big drop off, something like that. And then we'll sort of peter out for a little while. And that's all pretty cool. And then say we do some sort of content drop or some sort of invent game. And then maybe we have another spike again. Uh, and we're doing the same thing all over again, on and on and on. And this becomes, this becomes kind of tricky because trying to work out like where these peaks are and how many players we expect to have is really hard to judge and really hard to determine. Also, these are the points where we're probably going to be making the most amount of our money, right? We have the most number of players in our game at that point. So we want to make sure we take advantage of that uh, as, they're, as they're playing inside our game. So making sure that we can account for these peaks uh, and troughs within the number of players within our system and the number of much amount of load that we have uh, is an important part of what we need to consider when looking at databases here. So what is that? Why is that such a big deal? So if we look at this as we were talking about before. So... We have uh, all our, say, our login servers or our, our servers that are taking all those sort of requests, right? These are all our login servers, and they probably also do player data and all kinds of other fun stuff, right? Uh, maybe it's game inventory, that kind of stuff. And we have this database server here, and we're all sending data to it, right? This may work fine up until a certain point. And then it starts to sort of break down. And we say, okay, we, we, there's suddenly the number of reads and the number of writes are just too much for this to handle. Can't handle it. So we say to ourselves, okay, you know what? 
that's fine. Uh, what we're going to do is like, maybe we take the website down for a little while and we just, we say, okay, let's, let's, let's just make it a bigger database server. Yeah. Well, I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. You know what? Uh, that's not, that's not working. Like now our number of reads of rights are growing more, right? We have a very successful game. We want it to keep growing. So let's, let's, you know, we'll take it down again and, uh, make it even bigger. Now, eventually, uh, really what we're doing here is we're just adding to a single machine more CPU and memory, right? And probably some disk, right? But that be that's just that's just gonna be one box, yeah? At some point, we're just gonna have to, we're gonna hit our upper limit of how we can do this on a single machine. And unfortunately, right, our database is gonna break. That's my, that's my explosion. <laughs> as you can see here, right? So we need to be able to scale our read and writes across multiple machines we, to, to be able to manage this. Doing it in a single machine at some point is going to fall over on us. So we have to look at that. So I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna show you a couple of little ways you can do this. There are a variety of ways you can do it. Depends on what database you're using as well. And each database has its own trade-off. Like I said, this is a whole deep thing, but I just wanna give you a couple of ideas of things that you can potentially do um, and give you some other, other good advice in that area as well. So first, first example I like to use um, is uh, usually uh, read and write replicas. So for example, we're talking about our login service. Yeah, that's, that's usually a good one there. So we have, you know, a couple of computers and then we have our, our login machines, right? Our servers that handle those login requests. Um, and we have our database and I'm actually gonna use a different color whereby we have a couple of other ones. What are these? So these are read replicas. So what does that mean? So as this sends in, say, our login request, um, because the data in our read replicas is relatively static, we can send the request here to a read replica and say, okay, like, go find me a username and password. Um, but these, we still have a singular point of entry, right? If we want to write data. Uh, so if we say we're going here and we're saying, like, create an account, uh, then that has to go in here and it goes into our write. And then our read gets eventually passed down to our read replicas. This usually works out quite nicely. This is a nice way of offloading a lot of tasks onto other machines. The downside here is the data that ends up here is eventually consistent. So it's going to take a short amount of time for this replication to happen down here. In some cases, that's fine. Maybe in this particular case, right? As soon as you create an account, if it takes a couple of seconds for someone to be able to log in, maybe you usually have a verification process anyway that's fine. For other instances, maybe if you have player inventory, for example, as soon as somebody gets handed some gold coins, you wouldn't want it to ever come back and be like, actually, no, you don't have those gold coins. So this right entry point here can still be uh, a bottleneck, but this is one way of pulling stuff out uh, in a way that, that enables you to scale a little bit further out in terms of your reads. Your writes, not so much, but your reads then scale out a bit more. Now, if we want to do more write replication, how do we do that? So we have exactly the same scenario as we did previously, but let's say in this scenario, right, people are creating a lot of accounts. So we have our, our servers to handle our requests for create, create those. All right, so we're sending these create events. All uh, right, so you put out a release and everyone's like creating accounts so that they can play your amazing new game. We can have multiple instances um, for writing. And what we'll do is we'll call them shards. What does that mean? So that means that, for example, this one might go here, this one might send this data to here. And so we can separate the data that we have inside each database and break it apart. So um, this is a, a very naive example. Often there are a variety, variety of ways you want to shard your data that's more consistent. Um, and I wouldn't recommend this in production, but it's a great way to explain it. So for example, if you had accounts between say A through L, M through S, and S through Z. I don't even th know if that's necessarily even, but gives you an example, right? So you know now, like we've split out these user accounts into here. And if this person's sending, you know, their name is is Aardvark. I don't know why, because it starts with an A. Um, it would end up in this in this database here. But, you know, if their name was Steve or Simone or something similar, it would end up down here, which is a much more reasonable sounding name. This then lets you sort of be able to scale your rights uh, in a easier way than you would previously, or at least be able to separate those between different machines. What can be tricky here though, 
is what happens if at this point you still can't scale from this point? Maybe we need to split up M through S into something separate or something smaller. So being able to do that on the fly while people are playing games and reshard your database, that can be hard. I've seen many games that have had to, during launch or during high peak times, go into maintenance mode so that they could manually shard their database uh, and take, be able to handle more load in terms of writes and reads. So we don't want that either. Now, there are some patterns for this and other things we could necessarily do. Um, I'll give you one potential idea here. So uh, very common pattern within other web type technologies as well, but also works super well in gaming. So say we have our servers like we did before, we could also put in place some kind of proxy server. Now its job is to take all the requests for, um, for those, that data coming in and out, maybe like create an account or log in. Um, and these are usually super lightweight, so you could either run multiple of them or they can probably process a lot of requests, but their job is to say, oh, cool, right? Like this request needs to go out here, but uh, that login request needs to go down here, and then another request needs to go down here. What's super nice about that is then if you ever needed to add, say, another instance of a database, none of your servers, none of these request servers here need to know about any change that needs to happen. All they ever know about is this proxy that exists. And that gives you a lot of, a lot of power, nice abstraction away from that kind of stuff. But the most important thing I want you to take away from here is one very important thing. So as we were talking about previously, we've got our, our servers, our login servers, for example, that we were talking about, the handling those requests. What I wanna be really aware of is that as players are playing my game, and we're sending all these requests, as players are continuing playing games, I want to be able to manipulate the databases that I have behind the scenes at the same time. Ideally, I don't want shutdown. I don't want maintenance mode. So make sure that whatever database solution you create and utilize has the ability for you to say, oh, you know what? Now we have a whole lot more players playing my game and I need to manipulate, maybe add more shards, maybe add proxies, maybe add read or write replicas, depending on the solution you choose. And I can do this at runtime with no downtime to the players that are playing my game. Because as we were saying previously, right, that load graph we were saying before, this is when our players are playing our game. We want it to be that we can take advantage of that peak so we can make as much money as we can. Unfortunately, what I see a lot is uh, gameplay will hit that peak, maybe even first launch. And what actually has to happen is the team has to shut down the entire game, go in, manually shard, put in other such strategies to enable them to be able to expand their read and write capabilities at the database side. And they're losing out on potential revenue, player retention, all that good stuff that happens at launch or in a particular game event. So the last thing I wanna see is your game go down. So just make sure you load test this, make sure that you make these changes while those things are running, while your tests are running so you can see whether they work or not, because really, I don't want your game to go down. That just makes me sad. So I want to do a shout out here. Uh, a big thanks to my teammate, Gabby Davila. You can see it on Twitter. Gabby's the one who I went to and asked all about databases and gave me lots of great information. If you want to go really deep on this subject, Gabby's a great person to follow. Make sure you check her out on Twitter. Have a look at some of her videos and the content she's put out. If you want to follow me, you can hit me up at twitter.com slash neurotic, youtube.com here slash Mark S. Mandel. Also on Twitch, where I do some open source streaming of game dev stuff at Mark Mandel. Uh, if there are topics that you want to be covered or you have questions about what I've talked about here, please drop me a line either on social media or here in the comments. Love to have them. Definitely want to put out more of these videos. I've got a whole bunch of ideas, but always great to hear from people as well. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you very much for listening. Catch you all later.